Okay, here we are at the Theology of the Body Congress in California with Sister Lisa Laguna, who I just met, and she's from the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul. There they are, they're out here doing some vocations awareness. And so we were just chatting about a great, um, a great thing that her community does that I, I was listening to and just thinking, it would be so awesome if families could do this. And you do this with your uh, school kids too. So why don't you tell me a little bit about it? It's called Community Review, and, and community what's review. the idea? It, it's kind of something that grew out of the old practice of chapter faults that used to happen in religious communities. And it's the idea of us coming together as a local community and kind of, we use the word accusing ourselves, but kind of recognizing an act of humility um, ways that we affect in a negative way or hurt um, in a negative way our community members. It could be um, gossiping, it could be that we're short-tempered with each other, it could be different ways like that, that, that we're hurting each other. And maybe we don't even realize we're doing it until we come together and we take time to pray about it. Um, and sometimes sisters are feeling that we're doing that and they don't realize that we're aware we're doing it until we come together and we share about it. Um, but we find it to be a really healing experience and certainly a very sacramental time. Um, anytime we come together and talk about how we're sorry, we ask for pardon from each sister in the local community when we do that, um, ask for God's grace, and we ask for continued prayers that we, that we can get over that stumbling block that we're living through at that time. So walk me through this a little bit. So you come together in a room and you mm -hmm. probably have the environment set up to facilitate this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And is there an opening prayer or anything? Yeah, we usually say the Come Holy Spirit prayer. And, mm. and that's how we open most of our spiritual exercises with that prayer. And um, because we're very used to the practice, we literally just open with, you know, now it's time to share. And one sister will just pipe up and say, sisters, I'd like to say I'm sorry for something, for example, like I'm sorry for the impatience that I've exhibited to you. Um, I'm going through a really hard time right now and I know that I've been impatient. You've been trying to share stories with me and I've been cutting you off and I don't mean to do that. I really want to listen to you. Um, I ask your pardon and I ask your prayers so that I can stop doing this because I don't want to hurt you that way. And I, you know, I want to recognize Jesus in you, so I, I want you to help me out. And the ground rules are you can't accuse anyone else, obviously. No accusing anyone else. And it works best if you're specific and it's really a significant issue, not something like popcorn. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, and not like, oh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings sometime in the last month. That's pretty, you know, That's not you probably specific. have done that, so it's probably insignificant to say that, to be really specific. Um, and, and also that we don't respond to each other. We just listen. Yeah, you we don't, promise to pray for each other. You don't pipe up and, and get into a big discussion right. hey, that's about right, the that's issue. Right, you did that to me. No, we don't yeah, do that. So we you just sit there. Everyone else sits there and just prays. Exactly. Okay. And you do this with your um, kids that you teach at school, that's right? right? What ages are they? Um, middle schoolers, mm -hmm. so eighth grade. And uh, right during Advent, we do that right before we break for Christmas. And then right at the end of the school year, right before graduation, we would do that also. Come together, sit in a circle. Well, we have a, usually during a retreat day. So we've had this whole environment of retreat. Talk to them and also say the same kinds of things where we say, look, we're not going to talk about, oh, I'm sorry if I ever offended you because we have offended each other. But to be specific and we talk, give them examples. Bullying is an example, gossiping, um, signaling people out, being exclusive, not including people, things like that. Things that really affect kids in particular. Mm -hmm. And I'm always amazed at how honest they are, how they know the things and the ways that they hurt each other. And they've always come through. You've had kids come out with, uh, I'm sorry, for bullying you. They don't yes. necessarily use the word bullying, right. but uh, I'm sorry that I've been making fun of you. Yeah. This really and that. Specific, You've yeah. been doing this for 15 years, yes. and you say you've never had a problem with it. They're always. It always, it always, um, always the things that I would pray surface, surface. Wow. Yeah, always. So you pray a little bit before you pray get a into lot. this. <laughs> <laughs> a lot.
pray a lot and pray with the group. Okay. And and you gotta you know you gotta not just lay ground rules but pray for an environment that talk about the things that hurt people before they go into the exercise. Right. You know talk about how hurtful it is to be excluded. Talk about how hurtful it is to you know how harmful gossip is things like that. Yeah. So they have an idea. And that they know that they're not the, you know, that we're not the only sinful ones, you know, that we're, we're part of this, you know, kind of hurt body, of, you know, that kind of gets into that. And how par- how powerful would it be if parents modeled that a little bit, you know? It's really important. I always go first. When I, as an educator, With, as a teacher. I would go first. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I tell them, um, always make an act of humility first, you know, the ways that I have failed as an educator to them. And I think it would be just as meaningful for parents. And what a gift to give those kids, you know, in the classroom or in the family, to um, model courage and bravery in in um, communicating our faults, to model humility, and to show that it's um, something that doesn't need to be scary, that it can be responded to with love, and that we all feel so much better afterwards. And uh, we don't need to spend all this time hiding from our faults. And, and uh, boy, it's just, it's just so much better. So you're introducing them to this practice that they can carry into adulthood. And down the road, I'll bet if you talk to some of your graduates 10, 15, 20 years from now, they probably use that in their marriage. In all different degrees, I'm sure. And then that, that notion of mercy and forgiveness that just naturally flows from that, you know, just we get prepared to offer that regularly. Just It just comes naturally out of that practice. Okay, well, this is a great idea for families. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Thank you. Thanks for your ministry. Thank you, and good luck with your ministry you. and your outreach. Thanks. God bless. All right.